Welcome to the Kitsap Publishing Deep Dive Podcast with myself, Jack Bennett, and Emily Waters. Join us as we explore books, current events, history, politics, health, and more. Let's dive in. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. You know, trust, it's a word we throw around a lot, but uh, when you really think about it, it's kind of loaded, isn't it? Especially in the context of family. Absolutely. It's one thing to say, I trust my family, but then life throws those curveballs, those difficult situations, and suddenly those family bonds are tested in ways you never imagined. And that's exactly the territory we're diving into today with Trust Me, Trustee. This book, it's a first-hand account of a woman named Linda who navigates the choppy waters of family dynamics, aging parents, and the weight of responsibility. What's fascinating about Linda's story is how it starts. She talks about her childhood, growing up with this idea that trust was directly tied to obedience, specifically obedience to her dad. It was less about love and more about avoiding his anger. You know, that's really interesting because it makes you wonder about the long-term impact of those early experiences. Like how much of our adult approach to responsibility, to decision-making stems from those early lessons about trust and obedience. It's a huge factor. Those early experiences lay the foundation for how we view authority, how we approach conflict, even how we perceive love. Makes you think, right? So we've got Linda, and then we meet her family, her mom who is struggling with dementia a supportive husband by her side, and of course, the siblings. Bridget, Susie, Sam, each with their own, shall we say, personalities. Kind of like every family, right? Exactly. And as Linda's mom's dementia progresses, we see how those individual quirks, those dynamics that might have been manageable before, they become amplified. Dementia has a way of doing that, acting like a magnifying glass on existing family tensions. It's like those little things that might have been brushed aside before. Suddenly, they become bigger, more significant. Mm -hmm. And those early signs of dementia that Linda starts noticing in her mom, the memory lapses, repeating stories, those are tough to face head on. Absolutely. It's easier to explain them away, right? right? To tell yourself, oh, it's just a senior moment, Mm -hmm. rather than acknowledging that something more serious might be going on. For sure. But then Linda shares this heart-stopping incident where her mom accidentally locks herself out of the house and tries to climb through a window. And that's when the reality of the situation hits them hard. Those crisis points, as difficult as they are, they often serve as a wake-up call for families. They force those tough conversations about safety, about care, conversations that might have been avoided before. And for Linda and her family, that wake-up call leads to a major decision moving their mom to an assisted living facility in Colorado. But as you can imagine, that decision comes with its own set of challenges. Especially financially. The costs associated with assisted living, with dementia care, it can be overwhelming for families. Yeah. And then there's the emotional weight of it all. The guilt, the worry, the uncertainty. Right. It's a lot to process. And this is where we start to see those cracks in the family dynamic, those underlying tensions start to surface. Exactly. And unfortunately, it's not uncommon. Linda notices her siblings seem more preoccupied with their inheritance than with their mom's well-being. It's a sad truth. But dementia can sometimes bring out the worst in people. It's like the focus shifts from caring for their mom to what's in it for them. Like, Linda even overhears Bridget making comments about inheriting their mom's car. Which speaks to those deep-seated fears and insecurities we were talking about earlier. When people are afraid, they often act out of self-preservation, even if it means putting their own needs above others. It makes you wonder, right? Are they truly concerned about their mom, or are they more concerned about what they stand to gain? And just when you think things couldn't get any more complicated, Linda uncovers something deeply unsettling about her mother something that completely changes everything. So picture this. Linda is back in California, packing up her mom's house before the big move to Colorado, and she stumbles upon something that just rocks her world. It's a tough moment for her, for sure. It really is. She sees her mom behaving inappropriately with her brother-in-law, Susie's husband. Now remember, this is a man with a history. He's been abusive towards Susie in the past. Wow. So you've got the stress of the move, the dementia diagnosis, the family dynamics. And then this, it's like a whole other layer of complexity gets added to the situation. Totally. And for Linda, it's especially jarring. She talks about how this completely shatters the image she had of her mom from her childhood. This picture of her as this proper, almost untouchable figure. It's a powerful reminder that dementia can impact not just memory, but personality, behavior, 
in ways that are really hard to predict. It's like the disease chips away at who that person is at their very essence. It's no wonder Linda feels so lost and confused. Absolutely. It's a profound sense of loss, not just to the person as they are now, but of the shared history, the understanding you thought you had. It makes you think about all those memories, those core beliefs you hold about your loved ones, and how fragile those can be in the face of something like this. And through it all, Linda is still trying to hold it together, juggling the logistics of the move, dealing with her increasingly demanding siblings, and grappling with her own internal struggles. She's carrying a lot. You can really sense the weight of responsibility on her shoulders. It's like she's trying to be everything to everyone while also battling her own doubts and fears. And that's where having a support system, someone to talk to who understands the complexities of caregiving, hmm. is so crucial. It's not something you're supposed to navigate alone. Absolutely. We often underestimate the toll that caregiving, especially for someone with dementia, can take on a person both emotionally uh, and physically. It's emotionally and physically draining. And it's not just about the practical tasks, right? It's the emotional labor, the constant worrying, the guilt, the feeling of never doing enough. Right. And then on top of all that, you've got Linda's role as trustee, which is a whole other layer of responsibility. Oh, absolutely. It's a huge undertaking, managing her mom's finances, making sure her care is taken care of, and trying to keep her siblings informed, even though they're not exactly making it easy for her. No, not at all. It seems like every step of the way, they're questioning her judgment, accusing her of mismanaging their mom's money. It's a classic example of how fear and mistrust can creep into these situations. Even though Linda is trying her best to act in everyone's best interests, her siblings are so caught up in their own anxieties that they project those onto her. And this is where the book really dives into the nitty gritty of trust management, right? Because it's not just about following the letter of the law. It's about navigating the emotional landmines of family expectations, potential conflicts of interest, and trying to make decisions that you can stand behind even when others are questioning your every move. It's a high pressure situation for sure. And it doesn't get any easier. In fact, Things take a turn for the worse when Linda's mom has a fall, needs hip surgery, and ends up in a rehab facility. Oh, no. Yeah, and from the way Linda describes it, the experience was pretty eye-opening. In what way? She talks about the impersonal care, the neglect that led to her mom developing bed sores. It's heartbreaking. It's a harsh reality that many families face, though. Finding quality care for aging loved ones, especially those with dementia, can be incredibly challenging. It's like navigating a system that often feels impersonal and overwhelming. But what's inspiring about Linda is that she doesn't just accept it. She becomes a fierce advocate for her mom, pushing back against the staff, demanding better care. She even ends up getting her mom transferred to a different facility. It's a good reminder that we have a voice and we have to use it, especially when it comes to advocating for those who can't advocate for themselves. Absolutely. But it takes its toll. It's exhausting, emotionally draining, and it's clear that Linda is reaching her limit. Just when she thinks she's finally found a good rhythm, something happens that throws everything into chaos. And that something is their mom's passing. It's like all that simmering tension, all that resentment that's been building up, it just explodes. It's a common scenario, unfortunately. Grief has a way of bringing unresolved conflicts to the surface, often dividing families instead of uniting them. And in Linda's case, the fallout is brutal. She comes back from Colorado after her mom's death, and instead of being met with support, with condolences, she walks right into a wall of accusations from her siblings. You've got to be kidding. After everything she did for their mom. I know, right? They're questioning every financial decision she made, accusing her of misusing the trust, even threatening to take legal action against her. It's like they've completely lost sight of what really matters. Their grief their fear, it's blinding them to Linda's genuine efforts to care for their mom. Exactly. And for Linda, who's already emotionally drained from everything she's been through, it's almost too much to bear. She talks about feeling so betrayed, so alone. Even her husband, while supportive, doesn't fully grasp the depth of what she's going through. It's a reminder that even with the best of intentions, even when we try to communicate our experiences, it's not always possible for others to truly understand what we're going through especially when it comes to the complexities of family dynamics and the emotional toll of caregiving. And those dynamics, they really come to a head as the legal battle plays out. Linda's siblings hire lawyers, demand a full accounting of the trust. It's a nightmare. Wow. It's amazing how quickly things can escalate when mistrust takes root. And it just goes to show how important it is to have everything documented, especially when it comes to managing a trust. 
For sure. And thankfully, Linda eventually hires a lawyer who specializes in these types of cases. But it's a long, drawn-out process, emotionally and financially draining. I bet. It takes a toll. It really does. But what's remarkable is that even in the midst of all this chaos, Linda starts to find strength in unexpected places. She talks about relying on her faith, finding moments of peace and solace amidst the turmoil. It's a powerful testament to the resilience of the human spirit, isn't it? Mm. That even when we're faced with such difficult challenges, such betrayals, we can still find a way to tap into our inner strength, our faith, to help us navigate those tough times. It's really inspiring. She talks about this cyclical pattern of doubt and surrender, of trying to control the outcome, and then realizing that sometimes the best thing we can do is let go and trust that things will work out the way they're supposed to. It's that surrender that allows us to open ourselves up to new possibilities, to find strength we didn't know we had. Absolutely. And you see that in the decisions Linda makes, like selling her mom's house to her daughter and using the money to buy a triplex. It's a way of honoring her mom's memory while also taking control of her own future. It's a powerful example of choosing hope, choosing to move forward, even when the past is filled with pain and disappointment. It's about finding that inner compass, that inner voice that guides us towards what feels right, even when the path ahead is uncertain. And I think that's what's so powerful about Linda's story. It's a reminder that even when things fall apart, even when we're faced with unimaginable challenges, we have the strength within us to pick ourselves up to keep moving forward. It's a reminder that trust in its many forms, trust in ourselves, trust in something larger than ourselves, can be a source of incredible strength during those difficult times. Well said. Well, as we wrap up this deep dive into trust me, trustee, I'm curious to know what resonated most with you. What will you take away from Linda's journey? It's definitely a story that stays with you. It makes you think about your own family dynamics, about how you would handle those tough decisions, those moments of crisis. And for me, it really highlights the importance of open communication, of trying to understand different perspectives, even when it's hard. It's a good reminder that we all have our own stories, our own baggage, our own ways of coping. And sometimes the most compassionate thing we can do is listen with an open heart without judgment. Absolutely. And for anyone out there navigating the challenges of family caregiving, of managing a trust, Linda's story offers a powerful message of hope, resilience, and the importance of trusting your own instincts. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. This has been quite a deep dive. Thanks for joining us. Until next time. Thank you for listening to the Kitsap Publishing Deep Dive Podcast. Emily Waters and I will see you in the next episode. Stay tuned.